If you are passionate about your profession of anesthesiology, you should watch this. This video is a trailer of our video on Isora's YouTube channel where I explain how misleading interpretations of the Regan trial led to confusion and potentially harms patients and education in regional anesthesia. Critiquing others' work is not a task taken lightly, yet it is very necessary. Here's the chronology. Between 2012 and 2024, several large trials have established the spinal anesthesia reduces complications in patients having hip fracture surgery. In 2015, the Regan investigators obtained $12 million grant from PCORI organizations that focuses on patients' driven outcomes. In 2021, the first Regan trial publication in New England Journal of Medicine concludes that spinal anesthesia is not superior to general with respect to survival and recovery of ambulation at 60 days after hip fracture surgery. Although the Regan investigators explicitly and correctly disclosed that their study is limited in that included only healthier patients, that the spinal anesthesia was not protocoled and actually failed and had to be converted to general anesthesia in 15% of the participating patients, the news outlets ran an unjust, oversimplified story that spinal is no better than general. In 2022, the Regan investigators published the second slice of the Regan study in Annals of Internal Medicine, concluding that spinal anesthesia was associated with more pain at 24 hours and more prescription analgesic use at two months, although the difference was clinically non-significant and only 0.4 points on a VAS scale of 10. And the data on non-opioid analgesics were not even collected. In 2024, the Regan investigators published the third slice of the Regan trial, this time the survival after one year in the Journal of Anesthesiology. Although they clearly state that their study population was healthier than in the typical clinical practice and they did not collect the cause of death, the study concluded that the long-term outcomes after spinal versus general anesthesia are similar. Seriously? How can we compare the death rate between the two short anesthetics that were given 12 months earlier to relatively healthy patients with hip fracture where the participating researchers failed at spinal 15% of the time and we don't even know the cause of deaths? My concern is that based on the misinterpretation of the Regan findings, the frail patients at the risk of general anesthesia may be deprived of spinal anesthesia. Moreover, the training in regional anesthesia may be negatively affected since the publication unjustly conclude the spinal anesthesia does not result in benefit over general anesthesia. Therefore, the training in spinal anesthesia may be perceived as not being essential, since in their underpowered study, biased against spinal anesthesia, they found no outcome difference in these crude and main outcome variables. Is my concern founded? Yes. In 2024, looking at the PCORI website, the Regan investigators are now applying for another grant. It's a $2.2 million grant application to develop an online educational tool advising against spinal anesthesia or educating patients that because spinal anesthesia is no better than general, the patients should choose anesthesia for their own hip fracture surgery themselves. Is this real or a bad dream? I have the highest respect for Regan investigators and do not doubt the integrity of the trial and have given the PI an opportunity to respond. However, if we do not raise awareness about the limitations of the Regan trial and leave the misinformation go unchecked, we are risking a significant backlash in patient safety and future of spinal and regional anesthesia. I invite you to watch the full video on Isora's YouTube channel at the link below, where leading anesthesiologists and surgeons also express the concern for patient safety if Regan study publications are not atoned for.